It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector. This particular program is called Pals, the Professionals and Animal Lovers Show. I heard a rumor that we have a singer on the show, and it isn't me, although I will pretend to be one <laughs> during the show. I might sing. So look, uh, right before the show started, there was a woman who came on the network and said, professionals and now for the live shows professionals serving community i dig when she says that i hear my voice i'm sorry Sally. i mean my, one of my, it's me. I'm so Sally, my favorite thing to listen to is tommy d but i mean like in stereo man what are we doing uh, I, I was trying to share us on my Facebook page live and I blew it. So. You know, there used to be like this company Borax and it was like one of these things where like they sold the box of like fabric softener, but the picture on the box was like a little picture of the thing of the box and a littler picture and a littler picture and a little picture. It was almost like when you're like have a mirror on one side of a room and a mirror on the other side of the room and you're looking at one and you kind of like get pulled into this vortex. Yeah. It's right. infinity, right? Yeah, like infinity, yeah. right? You just did that to me. I was like, oh my God, I'm hearing my own voice and I'm si I am doing the voice at the same time. I I'm was so totally, terrible at this time. I was I'm totally sorry. tripping out or tripping out even for a moment there. <laughs> All right, bring it back. I was just going to tell you a story about meditation and okay. now I'm, I'm totally bugged out. So let's bring it back. Namaste, Tommy D. Namaste. So here's the story I was going to tell you. Our song, well, professional serving community. I started on that whole thing. I, I think we are a professional serving community. And there's a whole bunch of folks on this network that are really bringing different content and different subjects and different guests to have, uh, um, you like the word different, do you, Tommy D? To have different conversations um, to, to really uh, bring things to light. And what we're doing here is we want to tell you stories we want to educate folks. I'm learning every time we get here. Emails popping off. Valerie's listening to our show during the show. I don't know what's going on. The wheels are falling off the bus right now. Everything's out of control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bring we're gonna bring you guests every single week, and we're gonna have somebody teach you about uh, something affecting the animal population. Um, everything from TNR to the feral communities to uh, trust for your pets and your animals. I mean, look, we believe this. We believe that the connection between people who care about animals and advocate on behalf of animals, we believe that connection is very strong. We believe that connection is as strong, as I like to say, between pets and their owners and owners and their pets, depending on who's really in charge of that relationship. And, uh, and what we were just talking about in the green room, listening to our guest and Valerie talk, I don't think it's the humans that are in charge of that relationship most of the time, but that's a whole nother thing. Um Greg DeFranza was on the show, talk about how we should train our animals. That goes back to a bunch of months back in like uh, when it was warm out here in New York. Um, but I, I think there's some training that goes on in both directions. But we believe this connection is so strong. And I, I'm going to read you something. We want to amplify the message that the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. I wrote that, but I wanted to read it for you. We want to support one another in business by building this compassionate network together so that everyone wins. Especially the animals. Just like we rehearsed it. Yes. <laughs> yes. High five. Woo. High five. I like it. <laughs> like Borat, like that movie. Um, all right. So <laughs> I want to tell you one quick story. And our theme song that comes on, it makes me feel very zen. And I talked to Valerie about an hour and a half ago. And I was like, dude, I got to go. I got to go meditate. Like I literally needed to just, I've been at this machine all day with monitors mm -hmm. and people who want to talk to me and I want to talk to them and all this stuff. So I was like, I got to go meditate. So I got a funny story. So my six year old, well, he turned seven the day this happened. It was last Friday. And I have videos and pictures of this, although I don't, I'm not big on putting my kids on the interweb, but the, the um, he literally climbed up on a bunch of cases of water in target. And now if you're only listening you got to go to the, to the Facebook later on and check this out. But he literally legs crossed, sat up seven years old on cases of water like this. Aww. Meditating in the middle of Target to the point where I take video of this and I send it to my mother. Then he takes a Sonic the Hedgehog hog stuffed animal, takes Sonic, puts him up there, crosses Sonic's legs and makes Sonic meditate with him. Now, Aww. that's what's going on. And this dude is hysterical. 
Um, I, he, he's just funny. He's a character. I don't know where he gets it from, Valerie. I don't know where he gets it from, I Tiffany. Can't imagine. I can't imagine. It must be his mom or someone else in the family. I have this great thought for you and your family. What is it? Because I'm, and I'm sure that you're going to kill me, but um, you can't jump through the screen, so I'm just going to go for it. I read a post the other day that um, Long Island Rabbit Rescue, the other LIRR, uh, <laughs> is in desperate need of fosters. And I, yeah. I've thought about this. I've thought about this on your behalf. I'm, I'm going to dictate your life for you. Um, they, rabbits, are much lower maintenance than dogs. So you don't have to take them out four or five times a day. You know, you basically throw some carrots at them. I'm sure there's more to it than that. I did have a rabbit once. I really don't remember. I think, you know, they poop, whatever. But it's, they're so cute. And I mean, this post, I'll send it to you, but th they were so desperate. They're like, if you have a four by four space, it could be in your bathroom. It doesn't matter. We need fosters. They're so desperate. They, they had just had a rabbit that gave birth. They didn't even know she was pregnant. They like went on a rescue. And I think rabbit fosters are kind of difficult to find. All right. So here's the thing. Listen up, world. <laughs> Listen up, all of our wonderful viewers. I watch Russell Brands. I, I follow Russell Brands on YouTube, and he's always, like, shouting out, okay, you 4.9 million angels who are trying to change the world. So I'll say this to all the people out there, Valerie, since you're putting me on the spot, I already talked to my wife about this, and she already said no. So, <laughs> but, no, she said no because we, you texted me about this already. That, oh, oh, I, I was so ready. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to do something anyway. I'm not getting the rabbit. Okay. I, I just, I feel like, like, I want Bugs Bunny because he was like a real sharp rabbit. Like that dude, I can, yeah, yeah. what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? Like, I like that guy, right? I don't think it's, yeah, but I will give a shout out to my cousin. I won't mention her name, but she has, I will mention the rabbit's name. It's called Marvin. And she's got this rabbit, Marvin. And when we hang out with him down at the Jersey Shore, um like this rabbit i don't know what the deal is but for some reason the videos that this rabbit or bunny has done have gone viral like and he's not he ain't really ain't doing much he's just a rabbit he's like hanging out it's not like he not like he's smoking a pipe and like reading you know you know war and peace to people he's a freaking rabbit but i'm saying here's what i'm gonna put out there none of this is prepared tiffany welcome to our world because yeah. none of this this is just what's in my head is coming out of my mouth that's how it goes so i think that we should ask people to tell us if they think the D's should get a rabbit. So I'm putting it out there to you. This is a call out to people who follow this show, who plug into this show. Should we foster a rabbit? Oh my God. Okay. It's out there now. It's in, it's into the universe. I put it out there. You know, I, 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 I'm excited. I want to see the results. So put, make it happen, Val. I will okay, I'm making it happen right now. I need okay. a good referral from an animal-loving divorce <laughs> attorney, but but we'll, <laughs> but we'll get we'll get through that, man. I'll, look, come on, Christine. So much, you know, no one would even know if there was a rabbit living up here in the attic with me. That's the funny. Nobody, part. nobody, you, and you need a mascot. I mean, I feel badly. I have like three. Actually, I have four, but one of them's never been on the show. You need a mascot. You, yeah, you, I do. And it's I not do. permanent. It's no. you will, you will, you you can make a huge impact by fostering. It doesn't cost you anything. They give you the food. They give you the what, medical if they need medical, whatever. And you can become this revolving door of. Oh, like, so no, wait, wait. see, you're, that's not, see, you're not being fair. You were not being fair in what you did there because you set this up. Now, I'm a sales guy. Remember that. All right. I'm a consultant. No, you set me up that this was a fostering thing. It's going to be for a tiny little you know, moment of time. And then you turned it into a rabbit flop house where they, they, <laughs> only they go as they want. It's, they sort of have to wear an ankle bracelet, you know, like <laughs> you know, a work release program. And then like, I get the rabbit and then somebody else adopts it and another rabbit shows up. And I understand, like, well, you don't have to. It's you tricking me. You're not sure you what you save you're... a lot of lives. That's really what you. Your house would become a life saving home. <laughs> no um, pressure. <laughs> not, 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 I, like as if I. So Tiffany, as if I will introduce Tiffany in a second. But like, so <laughs> if I don't do it, so it's not only is my my house could either be a life saving home or by not doing it, I'm a party to the you're death of rabbits. 
right, right, right. Wow. Right. Wow. <laughs> wow. So next week you can have a new co-host because I'm not going to, I can't put up with this abuse every week. Not every week. <laughs> Once every two weeks I can deal with it, but not every week. Okay. So, so the, <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. You can do it. You know in those Adam Sandler movies? You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Get a rabbit, get a rabbit, get a rabbit, get a rabbit. All right, let's get off of this topic and let's this show moving. So yes, Tiff- we have a guest. We also have a guest. Right. I, I want to I want to introduce Tiffany Eckhart, but I also want Valerie to give us um, a legislative update. What's going on in the world? I do see something on Facebook about cages that Vivian McShane is putting out there. I don't even know what that story is about. Kyle's telling me two minutes to break. What the heck is going on? We haven't even st- I haven't even introduced Tiffany yet. We can't take a break. Oh my god. So Val, <laughs> let's introduce Tiffany. Let's say hello to Tiffany. Yeah. You start some legislative stuff and we go to break. Tiffany Eckhart is here, Dog on Candles LLC. We are introduced from our friend Tanya Dival rhymes with Bible, right? Yes. So, <laughs> which we always say. It's like in parentheses. Uh, we say Tanya. <laughs> Otherwise, we love say Tanya. Tanya. So love Tiffany, Tanya. hello. How are you? Hello, good. How are you? <laughs> I, th- I really uh, think you should get this rabbit. I think this is a good deal. Oh, 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 I- I'm, I'm, I'm totally into this. Yeah. Oh my. Yes. <laughs> oh my. Goodness. I'm already starting to come up with names. Like, for, yeah. I was just gonna say, awesome what, what kind of names? Like, what can I you come think, up with? I think you guys should just find me an apartment that I'll have to live in. <laughs> so, that, so forget about the names. Just find new addresses where Tommy D can reside. A new attic, maybe. Somebody else's attic for me, for that matter. I want to. I want to tell you a very important, quick story before the legislative whatever. This is a, this is very relevant. When my father, who at the time was very sick, it was a couple of months before he passed. He was in a rehab uh, place in Nassau County. Um, that was before he went back into like neuro ICU. Anyway, he was in a room and this place, I forgot the name of it. I'm going to have to figure it out. It was on Hempstead Turnpike. And this place had pet therapy animals. Mm-hmm. And, and one of them was a, this big rabbit. I forgot, uh, uh, forgot the type of rabbit it was, but a floppy eared rabbit, big, big guy. <laughs> My dad lit up whenever they brought this rabbit into the room he just yeah. it, it was like he got this burst of energy right and he would pet the rabbit and like even though he was dying he yeah. lit up and and I will tell you that um there's something there's these animals have like healing power yeah. they really 100%. do 100 yeah I'm like getting love, emotional right like unconditional love so I got a text message from a friend of mine who I haven't talked to in a little bit. Katie, I love you. I appreciate the text message. Katie McGowan, um, Horse Ability. I sit on the board of Horse Ability, which is a farm out here on on Long Island. Yes, it is, Tommy. There you go. Um, And horses are incredibly therapeutic. Yeah. Like, you know, aside, put aside equine therapy, you know, and hippotherapy and the incredible work that, that, that they do. But just, I swear to you that I go there and I feel calmer. I mm-hmm. feel my blood pressure going down, just getting to the farm. Yeah. So it's it, these animals, all animals are special. We will talk about this rabbit thing, Val. I'm not, we were almost, we were so close to having a dog. Like, I know. like we were so close, Regina. Goes up. We were so close to getting one of those dogs. And I mean, it just, you know, had the children had better behavior that weekend, we'd have a dog. And, yeah. you know, things work out for the way. You have way. to be ready. You have to we be weren't ready. ready. We weren't ready, but we thought right. we were. So maybe fostering a rabbit for the rest of my life, a different rabbit every four months, Val, maybe that would be it. So, it is rabbit season. I just want to let you know. Uh, it's rabbit <laughs> season. It's rabbit season. All right. Bad, bad impressions. Everything is going crazy. We're losing it. We do have to take a break. It'd be nice if Tiffany got a chance to say something too when we get back. <laughs> it would be nice. She's just a guest. All right. This is your professional as an animal lover show. I am obviously out of my mind, and that's Valerie and that's Tiffany. We'll be right back in the house. Yay. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. 
Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. are back we're back we're back so i just pulled this candle over here because i love the way it smells but i'm always afraid to light the candle because sometimes i go downstairs and you know not a good not a good look but my wife you know i have certain addictions my wife was always buying candles i mean we've been together for uh 23 years now and like i remember when we were kids like she was always buying candles and i was like dude like we've got enough (laughs) candles and but so talk no, never have enough candles. I know. So that's the thing. <laughs> so like, that's the problem. Like, you know, like, but uh, it, you got to keep an eye on them. You know, you got to be mindful of that too. But what we're going to talk about is, is your company. And Val, I, I decided I made an executive decision. We're going to do the legislative <laughs> thing later if we do it. So, all right, um, because I want, I decided it'd be nice if our friend Tiffany got to say some words. So, so Tiffany, I'm, I'm reading this background here. Doggone Candles is a non-toxic fragrance company. It was created in 2017 by this lifelong musician. So we got to figure out what that's about, right? But it's a, it, it's a non-toxic company, right? Providing safe right. for humans, but also furry pests. What right. was the catalyst? Why was this even a thing? Like, why did you say we need these candles that are safe for animals? Like, I mean, it sounds obvious, but like, how's it happen? Well, for me, I had a yellow Labrador retriever. Her name was Lily. It was in 2012. So we're like, got to go back a little bit. Um, and she was diagnosed with something called laryngeal paralysis. So I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically like where, you know, the food and where you swallow, there's a little like, was flap so hers was paralyzed so it wasn't opening and closing the right way so she was having breathing difficulties so I decided you know what we're going to get rid of all of the you know we had the plug-in things from that let the scents out we had candles so many things and we just you really don't even know what's in them you, and I you thought think that was bothering her or like- uh, I do because breathing wise um you know it is like a breathing disorder. So I thought, let's get rid of everything that might cause her a problem. I didn't want her, you know, to, to suffer more than she already was from not being able to breathe. So um, that's when we decided to get rid of everything. And then I thought, I, you miss all of those things. You miss having candles and the scents in the house. So that's when I decided I'm going to come up with something of my own. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Love it. Are you? How long ago um, was that? Oh, sorry. Uh, well, you know, she. That was 2012 when I got rid of all of my home fragrances, and my husband kept saying to me, "And I miss having the say because they do smell good. And scent brings you back to places. It, it's, it's, mm-hmm. you know, memories and everything. So, um, okay. I said, I just, it was a few years, and then around 2017, I came up with the idea. I researched it. There weren't any other like uh, dog themed candles. 
Um, so I thought, hey, I'm going to go for it. I came up with all of my own names. And, um, and then 2018 is when I launched it on Instagram at first. So what, what's the best thing to share? I know you have a question, Val. I just want to ask, what's the best thing to share? Like, is it Facebook? Is it Insta? Like, where do you want people to go? Um, I have my website, doggonecandlesllc.com. Um, share that and, uh, let's Facebook and Instagram. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but let's oh, no, that's spell okay. it out. Yeah. Um, it's D-O-G-G-O-N-E-C-A-N-D-L-E-S-L-L-C.com. And they, everybody can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, I, I take orders from everywhere. It's just me doing everything. I like talking with everybody and, um, you know, just getting messages from everybody. So, yeah, that's I'm sharing this stuff on Facebook. But I got to share another thing, too. There's a, like, I got a lot of rules. I don't really have, <laughs> have like, no rules. But like one, <laughs> one rule I'm going to make up right now is like if you enter the screen, you have to introduce yourself. That's a new rule. I just made it up. So, Val, you have to deal with that. And I also, my other thing is, Charlie and Tanya Dival sounds like Bible are saying, hey, guys, we love you. Right back at you. I'm looking at you over there, except the camera's over here. What's up, guys? Uh, Football's uh, well. Um, I got that Boone baseball card, by the way. I gave it to my son. <laughs> so he loves that. It's like a little, we, we collect cards over here. So he took it and we put it in a sleeve and like we're protecting it. So we need, like, you know, we collect that kind of stuff. Anyway, Val, who is that cat? What's the story? What's going on there? Oh, this, I, I, I almost forgot about her. She's, I'm, I'm just sitting here petting her. It's like, it just feels so good. This is Phoebe. Uh, I call her the little terrorist because she's the one who she causes all the problems. <laughs> she's, she's, uh, she's known to just kind of like rip up toilet paper and, you know, whatever. But she's, I'm so proud of her because she has been just getting more and more out of her shell. Uh -huh. And she is, uh, she was never like, I could never do that six months ago, but now she's like, Let me, let me talk to her a second. Can you bring her back in, in frame for a second? Cause I got a conversation. I always like to talk to her. her. Jovi, oh. so a couple things, couple things. Oh. beautiful eyes, by the way, you, you're a looker. Two things. Ha, ha. Oh, I'm just joking. I can't see I'm not allergic when it's on video, but I want to ask, was that you that Valerie sent me a video, you putting your face in the toilet? Was that, Val was that this no. guy, Val? Was Strangely, that was Puffy. Puffy's normally the well-behaved one. But uh, so it was Puffy, like, putting, like, well, I was like, what is going on here? And the other thing, I guess, <laughs> I just, I'm telling you stuff. This is, this is the show, Val. This is it. You want, you signed up for this. You're in now. You're in for a penny. You're in for a pound. All right. So I'm sharing a bunch of doggone candle stuff on Facebook. Um, tell us, tell us, like, how... What, what is this all about? Like, meaning, um, you know, you have a line of candles. How do you even, yeah. how do you research it? How do you go, well, this is non-toxic and like, you're not, well, you're not a candle maker, right? Like it wasn't like in the family, third generation. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I, it was just a thing I wanted to learn and I made sure I learned all about the different waxes, you know, beeswax is the most natural. It's made by bees. Um, paraffins from petroleum. So you don't want to, most of your mainstream candles are either paraffin, uh, soy, you know, I, soy is from soybeans, which in the U S is 98% GMO. So that can be a problem for some people. Um, so you're not really going to get an organic soy. It's just not going to, it's, but there's it's just not enough of it. It's just such a small minority, right. Of the seed of the plant. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it's toxic, but I'm, I'm more, I want to go as natural as I can in beeswax is where it's at. Even though I'm deathly afraid of bees, I will jump out of this window right now. If there are a bee oh comes boy. in here. But like, so <laughs> I got a, I actually got a really, it's a good story. It's a terrible story, but I'll tell it because it's like crazy. But tell me if you don't mind, what, what's with the bees? Like, I don't like bees like around me because they sting, like, but I, I know they're important. But was yeah. there something that happened to you? Is there a story there? I, you know what? I'm just, I don't, not really. I'm just so scared of them. I mean, my husband knows it. He tells me to calm down. Don't wave your hands because they, and it never works. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm a total <laughs> lunatic if, so, if one comes in. Like, I just will yeah. run. I don't like, think anyone is it's like most people don't like the thought of uh, flying needles. You know? No, that's yeah. true. Too. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I will say that I, I think most of them will leave you alone if you just kind of like make pretend. That's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was at 
I was oh. at a, um, a vendor show one time a few years ago when I first started and I had all my candles set out and it was October and in Pittsburgh that can go either way. It's either really mm -hmm. cold or it's still really hot. And it was really hot that day. It was, I think it was close to 90 degrees and I had all my candles out and all the bees were coming up inside of my tent and people were joking. They want their beeswax back, but I'm like, Hyster I couldn't even take it because yeah. So it's just kind a of a trick. weird thing. I have a good trick for you. So, uh, I used to waitress and bartend and, uh, this is back in around, oof, I don't even want to say what year it might've been 94. Huh? Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was, I remember being outside at a country club. That's where I used to work. And um, the bartender uh, had like a couple of bees that were hanging out um, because they're attracted to, you know, the fruit. Yeah. Everything's right? juicy. Is yeah, all yeah. Juice yeah. Like yeah. Is very syrupy. So what he did was the bartender filled up a glass, like all the way up to the rim of ginger ale. And he set it down. And sure enough, the bees went over and he talked to them. He goes, go ahead. And he, sure enough, they went over and they just hung out on that rim and they left everyone else alone. So he wow. was going to just give them what they want. And they that's like, that um, you know, that's like Caesar Milan, right? Like we haven't had yeah. Caesar on the show yet, but Dr. Franz has been, has been on the show. So the bartender you're talking about, he was like the bee whisperer. It was very yeah. cool. I, I went far like, for that one. I, I was blown away and, and I, and, you know, occasionally I would do that too. I would just be like, I got this trick down, you know, <laughs> but I, I did, to... um, oh my goodness. I can't believe we're, we have we're going to another break. break. We're going to it's another break. time. It is. But when we come back, cause I don't want to forget to ask you, this is super important. I would like to know, um, a little bit about the rescues that you've chosen to donate to. So, so absolutely. So donates every candle every purchase supports a rescue or um like an advocacy group and for example joey's paw so uh, we know joey's paw but how you go about selecting them and if you could talk about them also absolutely that would i would love to all right we'll that do that when we come back awesome. while, we, while we go to break i'm going to share your website doggonecandlesllc.com and i will tell you the b story if you guys ask me later i'll tell you the b story <laughs> And if you don't ask me later, there's a really good chance I'm going to tell it either way. Well, this so is your Professionals and Animal Lovers show. Valerie's here. Tiffany's here. Tommy D is in the attic. We'll be right back. Hey, I am Joseph Franklin McElroy, host of the new podcast, Gateway to the Smokies. It airs on talkradio.nyc every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 7. Every episode is dedicated to memorable experiences in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and surrounding areas. This show features experts and locals who will expound upon the richness of culture, history, and adventure that awaits you in the Smokies. Tune in every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 on talkradio.nyc. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. And we're back. This is the Professionals and Animal Lovers show. All right. So check this out, Val. Listen to some of the names of the, and you probably checked this out already, but this is right up our alley. A little bit of wordplay here. Banana mutt bread, hound cake, 
candy yapple, right? Then we got man's zest friend, <laughs> cinnamon rollover. And there's one with Rover in the name. I'm looking for it, Tiffany. Where did it go? Um, oh, uh, to Apple Turn Rover. Apple Turn yeah. Rover. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I, I like, I mean, this is like right up my alley because I am a father and this is the kind of jokes dads love because we're corny, I guess, and cute. And that's it. Not to say your names are corny, but. Uh, <laughs> Grand paw, laundro mutt, which the, the laundro mutt one smells like cotton blossoms, yeah. fresh linen. That's like where, so if the dog makes a room stinky, it ain't so yeah, bad yeah. to have some of the laundro mutt in there after that, right? Yes. That's All why right. we kind of call it dog gone. Like the dog, you want the dog gone, but not the dog gone. You know what like I mean? We want the, the smell <laughs> the of smell, the smell. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. My my co-host is on mute and she's saying a lot of words right now. I wonder what oh, you got. Oh my god! Stuff? What is wrong with me today, uh, <laughs> Tiffany? Meanwhile, I was telling Tiffany before we we went live. I'm like, don't forget to unmute, unmute, unmute. <laughs> and it was anyway. you all along. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the problem. Um, so, what is your best seller? Uh, my best seller. Uh, well, I mean. It's probably one we have, it's called sleep, uh, sleepy puppy. It's lavender and vanilla. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, I'm going to show you, this is the, this is one of the best I showed you earlier. Um, okay. This is a spray. It's a room spray. It's non-toxic. It's called stay. And it's, it has like notes of maple and vanilla. Mm -hmm. It's everybody's addicted. Tanya from Joey's paw is she's like, you know, I'm her dealer with that stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we're getting into the topic that I understand. Okay, so, it only yeah, took so. a bunch of shows, but now, so, so let me ask you: Is it all through the website? I know you said you do like fairs and stuff like that. Um, or, yeah, like you know, I I do um, most most mostly it's through the website. Through Facebook is big. Um, Instagram, you know, like uh, everything's through social media. Usually, I do do a few vendor shows here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I have a hard time, like just sitting around. It's hard for me. Um, so I don't, you know, I'll, I'll do them, but I, I'm more of like, you know, social media kind yeah. of person or word of mouth, that kind of thing. Okay. So, um, you were going to talk about some of the rescues and everything. That yes. Um, I you love know, I have give back. First of all, thank you so thank much. You. Oh, like, I, I mean, wish every business would have a give back component. You know? Yes. Yep. Uh, but yeah, let's hear about them. Well, you know, I told you guys about, you know, why I started making candles, but it, it wasn't until I, you know, the first week I opened, it was, it, uh, I think it was August, 2018. I got a call from somebody that left a message and it was, it was Tanya from Joey's Paw, and we were talking and eventually I got to meet Boone. And when I met him, you know, some things changed in my mind. I thought, you know, I could help maybe more than even I thought I, it kind of turned the wheels turned a little bit more um, mm -hmm. that I, I thought I could really use this business to help even more than I thought I really, my mind was more on non toxic, getting people fragrance that was okay for their themselves and their pets. Right. But then it turned to I, I can use the money to help um, the animals in need. So yeah. that's kind of kind of where it went. And you know, and I have to say, um, you know, we lost our dog Presley in November and, um, about a month before she passed away, she was starting to be paralyzed in her back end. So I, I called Tanya, you know, in tears and I, she said, uh, we'll have a wheelchair for you tomorrow. And to me, that was just everything. It was everything to my husband. He still cries if we talk about it or, you know, um, and they, they literally had that chair here the next day and they had a brand new one. Uh, that was on a Saturday morning. They had a brand new one here by Monday. And, um, you know, it just, that, that just meant so much in it for us to be able to give back to people like that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's just, that's why I'm here. That's, that's what it's all about for me. So I totally get it. I totally get yeah. it. They are, I mean, look, they're, they're just such great people. Yes. And everything that they're doing for the animals, not just their own, but, you know, bigger picture, what an right. impact that they're having. So I, I totally get that as well. Yeah. And actually, if I may really briefly uh, mention that, so I have a company with my husband 
mentioned. Um, it's called Work Be Done. You're going to love this. Our logo is a worker bee. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're, we're recently launched and everything, so we're not, you know, profitable yet. Uh, in fact, we're, you know, it's all marketing right now. But that said, part of our platform is to give back a percentage of uh, profits to rescues and shelters and things also. So I will be joining you. Joey's paw is at the top of my list. Awesome. You know, yeah. And, yeah. And, awesome. and this is something that hopefully maybe there's a listener out there who is going to say, you know what, I have a company and maybe I can enroll in right. something like this too. I mean, it's, it's easy to do. Um, it is. And it doesn't take I'm not telling people you got to give everything. I know things, you know, everybody has to make money to live and have, a, but you know, I, for me, I, I just, I, I want to give as much as I can, you know, as my husband always tells me, you got to pay, make sure you're, you're saving for your bills too. Cause I have to have insurance, you know, all those yeah. fun things. But, um, I just, I, it's just, it's very important to me as a, as a business to, to give, to give that back. So hundred percent. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, uh, also actually, let me just ask you a couple of quick questions logistically, right? Sure. So, cause some people in business might want to know, like, do you have, um, is it an automatic setup thing? Like if you, uh, if you use a merchant service company or something that does all the math for you and just kind of like spits it it's out to, no, I pretty much do it all. Um, my husband helps me with a lot of things. He's like good with all the numbers and everything. Um, but no, I, I figure out everything. Um, in 2020, when the pandemic hit, I said, we're going to give all the profits. Everybody was struggling. I, you know, nobody could have their fundraisers. Um, yeah. I said, let's just, that's when it started. Like, let's give it, let's just give it all the profits, you know, that year. And then in 2021, I said, let's let the customer each month pick where they wanted to go to. So each month in 2021, we were able to just let a customer pick, you know, hey, I want to give it to Joey's Paw or, you know, wherever they wanted it to go. So oh, was, there, was it restricted to a few choices, Tiffany, or was no. it whatever they liked? No, whatever they told me, and which was nice because I got to meet new people of what they do and learn about their rescue or their organization. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Awesome. There was one, we did a farm. Somebody said, you know, there's a farm uh, that, you know, they have all kinds of animals that need help. So, um, mm -hmm. so that was neat. Um, and this month we just ended yesterday, actually, or wait, is today? No, <laughs> Valentine's day. Um, we did one for Abby's angels, uh, animal Haven They're in Somerset PA. What's so we that? raised, uh, $330 for them. We sold 63 items and we gave $5 for each item to them. So I mean, that's a big part of your, your revenue. I think, you know, $5 per item that's going to, that's going away. That's really generous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just feel like I, it's, you know, with, I told my dog in, in 2012 when, before she passed away, I'm going to do as much as I can to help animals. And then losing this, losing Presley in, in uh, November, you know, the, it just makes it even more. It just makes you want to help even more. And um, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So. Uh, uh, I, sorry, Val. Okay. Sorry. I actually, it's funny. <laughs> I just want to make sure this is, is Abby's angels. Uh, there might be more than one. Tell me what they do. So I know if it's the right one. Uh, they're Abby's angels, animal Haven and Somerset PA. They're oh. a rescue. Um, that's uh, like, I, I, I have them on my um, Abby's Angel, uh, Abby's Angels AH uh, dot org at, for Animal Haven. I'll show them to oh. the break, but I'll share it on uh, on Facebook so you guys can get can check out the work they're doing. But I, I did want to mention She's one thing. Great. Nicole is her name. Uh, she does. I got to meet her um, this at one of the Joey's Paw events, and she she does like tirelessly works to get these animals home they just had a group of uh puppies they called the home alone dogs so they all had names like harry and marv and yes yeah, so they're, uh, they're all getting them homes now and they're kind of McAllister. Yeah. my kids yeah. just started watching my my little guy the, the meditating guy that i was telling you guys about before he got into the home alone movies all of a sudden and mm -hmm. is it I, I he really likes watching television and movies but there's something a little bit devious of those movies because Kevin is like, you know, he's sort of a 
I, what'd you call your cat before? Like a terrorist, Valerie? Yeah. And Kevin McAllister <laughs> is, I don't know, terrorist might be like, terrorist-like. Like, or, I mean, he hurt those two men. Now they were trying to rob the house. I know the movie, everybody. Don't get mad at me. I understand they were invading his house. I know it. I saw the movie a thousand times. I'm just saying he, he wasn't like, not the, not, okay, here's what I'm saying. He's not the role model I want my seven-year-old to learn from. Uh, Kevin McCallum. Yeah. Unless, unless those two guys are trying to break into my home, then I guess those are good attributes to have. I'm really not <laughs> sure. Creative. I'm very confused about this. It's, it's obviously very, very confusing. Um, so I shared, I shared Abby's uh, Angels Animal Haven on there. There's one comment I wanted to make just to kind of shout out um, the Friday morning show that I'm the host of. The reason I want to shout it out is because something Valerie just asked you, uh, Tiffany, with regards to merchant processing, and it kind of rang a bell for me. Um, I have friends coming on the show who run an organization called Every Swipe Benefit Charity, which is just that. They are a charity, but they have a, a for-profit arm, which is a merchant processing company. But they've, mm -hmm. charity, they've given away $435,000 to nonprofit wow. organizations. because That's they incredible. Did, right? And it, it, but it's just massive amount. It's just like, you know, it, it's the bigger they get, the more money they give away. Right. But it, it culturally, it's... in. You know, the, the $330 you gave away on February 14th, that's an incredible deal for the organizations you give it to. It's just, you know, not that one is better or more important. It's just a matter of we're all trying to give back. And that's what we're, right. supposed, we're supposed to be doing. Exactly so, right. Yeah. So this, so, is, this is exactly the point. And this is why we're doing this show. Um, and we're going to certainly also include dog on candles on this coming year's like um, Christmas holiday suggestion gift list. Oh, thank but, you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Because we want to support people in business who do good things for animals. It's so simple. So, and same thing with the merchant services company. You know, I'd like to know who they are. And I well, like, tune in, tune in to talkradio.nyc at 10 o'clock on Friday morning to a little show <laughs> called Philanthropy and Focus with a guy called the nonprofit sector connector. It's me, Val. It's me. <laughs> I'm being cute about the whole thing. I know I you. I, I love that title and I, you have so many titles. It's, it's awesome. And I think we've got one more on the way for you, which is a uh, rabbit foster. Rabbit foster. Yeah. Well, shout out to your, uh, some friend of yours, apparently down in, uh, in South Carolina saying some guy called Barry Heffron telling me, I understand fostering a bunny is the new in thing. Well, guess what, dude, who said I want to be in anyway. All right. I'm not so sure, but you're like capital letters. I'm going to figure this out. All right. So apparently we have one vote for Tommy getting a rabbit. So uh, well, we I, have a lot more votes. That's what he's I got one here. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Two nothing. Two nothing. I know one person who carries a lot of weight who's coming home in a little while who might say, <laughs> oh, then look at that. Oh, you got the cat telling me. Oh, all right. We got to, we, we're going to go to a break. I think I promised I would show some kind of website at the break. Um, I don't remember now. Um, how about um, the Haven? The Haven. How about Abby? Abby's Angels. Let's, let's yeah. show Abby's Haven. Shout out to Abby's. And did you say her name was Nicole or Nancy? That's Nicole. Nicole. Shout out, Nicole. Hopefully, you come on the show at some point, too. All right, we'll be right back. This is Pals. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern for the Mind Behind Leadership, where we focus on what leadership really means to us and to others. We have practical discussions with the CEOs of some of the world's largest companies, owners of small businesses, and experts in psychology and behavior to get that inside track, what to do, what to avoid, and what really happens. Join me, Graham Dobbin, at the new time, 4 p.m. every Tuesday for the Mind Behind Leadership, here live on talkradio.nyc. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the Nonprofit Sector Connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host the program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on talkradio.nyc. Calling all pet lovers, Pet Avengers, assemble! On the Professionals and Animal Lovers show, we believe the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. It mirrors that bond between pets and their owners. Through this program, we come together to learn, educate, and advocate. 
Join us live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. back this is pals professionals and animal lovers show and i just heard the commercial so i know what we do here we're here to learn educate and advocate that guy's got great pipes he really knows how to deliver i mean i tiffany's a musician where i want to hear from her if she's a singer so tiffany we're going to talk about that in a second can you guys still see my screen is it showing every swipe benefits charity now yes oh my god i'm like a, a visual dj over here how cool is that yeah. That is the uh, organization you'll notice really quick, 423,777.45 on their goal to a million. My biggest fan, other than me, in the world of radio shows, because <laughs> I am, Tiffany, I really, really am. Like, I'm a big Tommy D fan. Like, he's like my favorite. I love him. But I am a big fan. My second biggest fan is my buddy Mick Collins. Mick works for this company, Pay It Forward Processing, which is the same company involved with the foundation. Uh, every swipe benefits charity. So I, I don't I don't want to brag on it, but I'm just saying this is really what we're talking about here. It's how for profits and nonprofits align and what happens. And and you know when Valerie came up with this idea for this show, I was like, of course, let's just do it. This just makes sense. Um, I don't agree with everything she says. Like, hey, get a dog. Like, hey, get a rabbit. Like, I don't always get like a horse. get a horse. No, that <laughs> one would do. So the funny thing about the horse thing, and we'll go back to Tiffany, is the funny thing is like. My kids want a horse because why wouldn't everybody wants a horse? But my friend Katie is like, Tommy, we got like 35 horses. We have them. You're on the board. Like tell your kids they're your horses, like whatever. I mean, so I do tell them that. All right. (laughs) Tiffany, are you a singer? Yes. I've been a musician for most of my life. Yeah. And you said you lived down in, um... you said you were living in Nashville for a while. Uh, we moved to Nashville in 2005 for a little while, uh, and then my husband got a job back offer back home, and it was he he had to take it. So we came back, and you know our families all wanted us here, so it, it's better. Yeah. And yeah, Pittsburgh's really good for music. I, I I sing to a lot of seniors. I do a lot of senior homes. I read um, that. I love that. Yeah, so much. Yeah. That's my. You know, when you were saying about your dad, and you know, I've been where I'm singing and a dog will come in and they'll have them sit with the, with, you know, the, the yeah. people in the community and um, they're really good. And they, they just like, just sit there and listen. So yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's good. So, I, so um, um, I want to hear about the singing, but I want to tell you this, cause I, I got to send one more shout out and then I got to go on mute because small people just started coming home. <laughs> Hi, I'm on, I'm doing a live show right now. Can you guys go downstairs? So Val, why don't you take it away? I'll be back. <laughs> Hi, besties. Um, <laughs> so I actually have a question for you. Don't sure. laugh. Um, <laughs> I have written, I can't even help it. I have like a bunch of parodies mm-hmm. and um, it's just really weird because these lyrics will just kind of start popping into my head out of nowhere. It's not like I'm trying, you know? Yeah. Um, but I've been doing it probably since I was like 16 or something. Yeah. So my question is, if I gave you like the lyrics or, um, and obviously the song's already, already written, so it's really just getting someone music. To it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a parody I wrote about a feral cat that used to be in my backyard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I was kind of wondering. Wait, wait, wait. Did, you help did, me. You steal, did you steal that from, from Phoebe on Friends? Is that <laughs> like smelly cat? Smelly cat? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's actually it's the song, the, um, I'm assuming a lot of people saw Pitch Perfect, um, the cups, cup scene, whatever, but um, the cup song, right? And so I would love for someone to help me kind of like make that come to life. <laughs> make up some music. I mean, for me, and I've, I have a friend that I've done this for, I, when people give me anything, I have to, it has, because I'm a songwriter, so mm-hmm. And usually the, the, the music actually comes first for me a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of write the lyrics. It's just kind of a weird thing. 
But Mm -hmm. so sometimes I can read what people do and I'll come up with something right away, but sometimes it's just not, not there. So it's just Mm -hmm. kind of one of them things where you have to see it and, and read it and try to get a feel, you know, do you know what I mean? Cause I'm picturing, like, I'm going to give you the lyrics. You're going to make this beautiful song happen. (laughs) And then we're going to bring you back on the show and you're going to perform it. (laughs) I think, I think we should have totally good. We should have a and party we, where she performs it. Like we could go, we could go on, like we could go on stage and like have a world tour and everything after all this. Wow. It's gonna happen. <laughs> I know you weren't. I know you were. <laughs> felt, I, Tiffany, I know you felt bad asking because we're just we're just getting to know each other. But I would be happy to open for you. You know, <laughs> you want me to? I I mean I I'm no, I'm not like I'm not like I don't know classically trained in singing. <laughs> I, I'm kind of self taught, and I you know and. I like the way it sounds when I sing a song. I like to listen to me. I, I have a legislative know. update. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, now it's a legislative update. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, wow. Legislative. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> but I, I do want to know really quick, who in your, do you have a go-to song, Val, you too, but do you have a go-to karaoke song? I know you're a singer, a songwriter, the whole thing, but do you have a go-to? Oh, you know what? I, it's hard to say because any kind of cover song you could really say is, you know, I guess karaoke. I'm a big Sinatra fan. So mm. Billy Hall, I sing jazz standards. So everything's, oh, you. Oh yeah. My God. Wow. All right. So yeah. So everything is like, you know, someday when I'm awfully low, when the world is cold, I will feel the glow just thinking of you and the way you look. Tonight, see, I'll sing. Yeah, see, look at it. we're singers. So look, I'm not oh going to. Oh my god, that was awesome. I'm not competitive. I'm not going to say who's better. I mean, it, it's nice <laughs> yeah. to sing together. All right, Val, do you have a? Do you have a? I want to because I want to tell you the punchline, which is my. I do. I, I have uh, Bobby favorite? McGee as my go-to. A uh, because I, I love Janice and I I just think it's a great song. But B because you, you like you can kind of not mess it up. Like you can scream. Like you can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so it's uh, it's uh, Roadhouse Blues by a, a band called The Doors with a guy called Jim Morrison. That's my go to. And I um, destroy yeah. it. I crush it. And I it's not good at the same time. And so, you know, I sang mine and you guys, I didn't get anything. Uh, from I know, I know, but we have a legislative <laughs> update and Valerie doesn't want to hear me sing. It's all kinds of drama. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and usually I end up taking my shirt off while I'm singing it. So like, there's like a lot of, I usually take the mop or the broom in the kitchen and sing. And it's Mm -hmm. like, I'm really channeling Jim is what it is, Tiffany. So I, I, it's a a very like meditative experience. There's a lot that I'm so full of it. I just don't want to do it right now. The show's just not long enough. You got (laughs) it. Oh my God. Well, no, but I, I would love to come. Okay. And, we would love to come see you do a show. Val, give me some, hit me with some legislative stuff. Thank real you. Quick. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. this is a big deal. Um, so the following um, assembly members, this is in New York, um, are co-sponsors for Sarah. That's the shelter. Oh, good Lord. Shelter and Rescue, uh, sorry, Shelter Animal Rescue Act. I'm going to sing soon if you don't get it together. Okay, okay, okay. So I, a special thank you to Thomas Abinati, Vivian Cook, Catalina Cruz, Michael Cusick, Inez Dickens, um, Charles Fall, Ann Kellys, David McDonough, Melissa Miller, and Michael Riley. And to Melissa Miller, who was a New York State Assemblywoman for years, she just actually stepped down and is now councilwoman on the board for Town of Hempstead. So my message to... Missy Miller, she has several rescue animals. She's a great advocate. And uh, we're counting on a lot of great things from her within the town of Hempstead. Thank you. That's it for now. <laughs> I, uh, um, so thank you to all those politicians for the great work you're doing. Cause I know when you're a politician, sometimes the focus can be on uh, just getting reelected. We we mm-hmm. get some talking about Every that. Every single uh, senator and assembly person on the state level is up for re-election this year. And just so you know, really quickly, the act I just mentioned it basically makes it uh, a priority and empowers rescues to be able to go into shelters and and save any animal that they choose to. Right now, 
They're killing dogs and cats and animals, even if rescues want to take them out of the shelter, even if they want to save them, even if they're on a kill list. So this bill is super important to us as animal advocates. I'm done now. All right. Keep your eyes on the road, your hands upon the wheel. Oh. That's all I'm going to give you right now. Gang. <laughs> if you want more, you got to join me in the attic, baby. All right. So we're going to bring this show to a close. Um, I hear my kids screaming downstairs. I don't know if they're mocking us or if they're just fighting. Um, they, might singing, they might be singing the Doors tune themselves. I think we're out of time, Valerie. Um, yes, we are out of time. Kyle, thanks for keeping time for us today. All right. So... <laughs> As we do every, every week, we, I want to say, Tiffany, thank you. We appreciate you. We, we appreciate you, you as being a friend of the family, so to speak. So we expect to keep in touch, uh, learn yeah. more about what you're doing and the whole thing. Um, I want to leave everybody with this. Valerie, thank you for your vision of this show, this community, what we're building together. Still trying to get me to adopt animals. A whole nother story for another day. <laughs> in his total commitment, to nonviolence, Gandhi always included the animals by stating the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Now look at this. Yeah. Namaste. Yay, Gandhi. Yay, Gandhi. Hashtag yay, Gandhi. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you for being here. Val, thank you, guys. Everybody. You guys are a riot. I'll see you guys later on. <laughs>